So here's a question for us to uh, learn how to use standard normal tables. So we will, in a moment, use uh, tables like this one here. We'll get back to that in a moment. What you see here is that we have a, a random variable, which is standard normally distributed. But all the type of questions are not of the type where we ask you for a probability, but you're given a probability but you're being asked for the value of the, of the standard normal random variable that sort of defines these probabilities. So before we do that, let's actually look at a sort of perhaps more traditional type of example you, you may see. If you were asked to say, calculate the probability that said that standard normal value is larger than one. How would you solve that? Well, we would go to a little sketch. I always recommend we are using sketches for this. Let's sketch sort of a standard normal distribution. This is quite uh, nice for me. Okay. And we want to know, we know the mean is at zero. We're being asked for value of one. Let's say one is here. So we would be asked for this sort of probability. And we would then go to the table and recognize that all that table gives us is probabilities of smaller than equal. So if we go to a value of one, we get a probability of 0.8413. But we would recognize that 0.8413 is this probability and that means this one here would be 1 minus 0.8413. Okay, and in this case, this would be 0.1587. Okay, that would be that probability. So this is how we traditionally use order, and that's the, often the main purpose of these tables. But now we start out, and let's go to part A. Let's sketch a picture first, or basically, we know there's a standard normal distribution, so this is already not so nice, but the mean is zero, and this is Z. We know the probability that a certain value that Z is larger or equal than a certain value Z zero is 5%. So what we are given here is a Z zero, and we know this area here is 5%. And the question is, what is that Z zero now? So if this area is 5%, then we know that this area here is 95%. And it's these smaller or equal values which we find in the table. So what we're now going to do is we're going to go to the table and we're going to see, okay, which value of set gives us that value, 0 0.95. So let's go to the table. Here's our table. So we're looking now, usually what we do is, we read this table, we start on the edge of the table, and then we look for the probability in the middle. Now we are starting to look with looking for a probability, and then we read of what value do we get on the edge. So we said we want 0 0.95, so we need to go to the bottom of the table somewhere, so here. So what you can see here is we're having a value between here we have 0 0.9495 and then the next one here is 0 0.9505. So the correct value is somewhere, possibly more or less halfway between these two values. And what is that value? It's 1.6 and then we just count the columns. That is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So that is the second digit is 4, the second digit is 5. So in a test, all we need you is to use the closest, so you could use either of the two, because the value is exactly in between. We know the value will be somewhere between 1.64 and 1.65. So we know that the probability that set, that's what we read of the table, is smaller than 1.64, and I'll put it halfway, between the two, so 1.645 is 0.95. And from there, it follows that the probability 
that set is larger than 1.645 is 0 0.05. Okay, so we think that value is 1.645. In the test, you could have used either 1.64 or 1.65. Okay, so second part of the question B. Probability that set is smaller than a certain negative value. So again, we'll start with a sketch. And don't try and save on the sketches when you solve these questions. That is a false saving. Zero. So some value here, negative set zero. And we said the probability that it's smaller than that value is 0.02. Five. So that's the probability that z is smaller than negative z zero. Actually, you should recognize that's the same since we are talking about a continuous distribution that z is smaller or equal to negative z zero. Okay, because of a continuous distribution, the probability that we get exactly a certain value is always equal to zero. So we're going to the table and trying to find that value here, 0 0.025. Here's our table. Again, we are now looking in the middle of the table and then read off what we get. 0 0.02. So, oh, here, we actually got it exactly. Okay, 0 0.025. And what have we got? We have negative 1.9. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it's negative 1.96. This is negative 1.96. And that's the solution to the problem. Okay, the probability that z is smaller than negative 1.96 is equal to 0.025. Part C. Let's start with a sketch. So symmetric around zero. What's the probability that z between two values, negative c naught and z naught, is 0 0.95? So we want a value here, negative z zero and plus z zero. Remember, we are having some um, symmetric distribution, and it's the same value, just with a negative sign, and we are symmetric around zero. And we want the probability in here to be 0.95. Right, that's what the question asked us for. That means the probability here has to be 0.025, again, because of symmetry, and here it's got to be 0.025. So this is the probability we are looking for. Now, perhaps you can realize that we already know at least half of that solution because this probability is exactly the same we were looking for in B. So we, knew, we know that this value here is going to be negative 1.96. And because of symmetry of the standard normal distribution of any normal distribution, this got to be 1.96. So it means we already got the solution. The probability that z is between these two values is equal to 0 0.95. And remember, it doesn't matter whether you write a small or equal on both sides or only smaller on both sides or smaller and equal on the left and only smaller here. These are all the same probabilities because we're dealing with a continuous distribution where the probability that set is exactly 1.96 or exactly negative 1.96 is zero. Okay. 